So uh, going beyond the poses, Patanjali's uh, Yoga Sutras. The, he outlines the eight limb path as a guide for living. Doesn't he? Do you agree? I haven't read them yet, but I... Yes, you right. have read them. You haven't read the eight limbs? The yamas and the yamas? Oh, I, know the, I know the yamas and the yamas. Well, then how are you saying that you're not, you haven't read them? That's what I'm referring to. Well, is there like hundreds of sutras? No, we, this we, is we like the sutras. The sutras. We're just talking about the eight limbs here. Yeah. But so you, you have read them. No, I'm not. I'm not telling them to follow the sutras for people with anxiety. <laughs> that would give someone anxiety. Okay. I'm telling them to use the eight. I'm. I'm suggesting mm -hmm. the eight limbs as a prescription for anxiety, or at least a supplement to a clinical program mm -hmm. for recovery. All right, practicing the eight limbs is. Does that make sense? Yeah. So can you see the eight limbs as maybe a prescription for that? Do you agree that that's what it is? Yeah, it's because it, 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 it... Good, so now you know that you've read it. You know which text I'm referring to. Yeah. Cool. I thought you meant all the sutras. Nope. Okay. This is no. the next one, so yeah. That'd be well, silly, wouldn't it? I, I plan on reading all sutras. You, uh, you think that that would uh, yeah, treat anxiety? No, no, not for anxiety, it's for, but for my, for my own personal... Oh, of course, life. yeah. yeah. It's like I should probably read the Bible. I should read the Quran. Right, but they remember this is for my like yeah. talk to try to yeah. convince doctors to use eight limbs for psychiatric yeah, so purposes. So we'll limited to this, the eight uh, limbs. Uh, practicing the eight limbs is what we call yoga, not the class you like to take at yoga works <laughs> twice a week. Although that is also that's also helpful. Now that we have established. What we are not focusing on, let's delve into the philosophy and details of. Um, philosophy? Uh, the eight limbs, of the eight limbs, eight limb path. The list we are. The, the, oh, the first. Yeah, first. The first six are action oriented suggestions. Yamas, Yamas, Asana, Pranayama, Pratyahara, Dharana. These require action. Dhyana and Samadhi require no action. Each limb basically depicts a positive, productive, and healthy way of is that it? interacting? I think it's interacting, right? Way of interacting Let's with. Let's see, each limb basically depicts, depicts a positive, positive productive, productive, and healthy way of interacting with, with uh, yourself, yourself and the world, and the world you around you. Well, they're you yourself in relation yeah. to the world around you, really, right? right the eight limbs of yoga or strengths. Yamas, this is a list of actions to avoid when dealing with yourself and others. This limb teaches us about non-harming, speaking your, your truth, non-stealing, mindful, conservation of energy, and non covenant The niyamas are observances, um, actions to take when dealing with yourself and others, including cleanliness, consentment, contentment, Sustained practice, self-study, and connection to universal cosmic energies. He sounds so enthusiastic about reading this. Uh, the, the last one is Ishvara Pranidana, right? The last one? The last Niyama, right? No. I don't, oh, the last one, yeah, but why are we starting with the last one? Yeah, this, this is because this, I just read the last one. Oh, okay. Right, the, the connection are you trying to do like, the alphabet backwards but with the Yamas and the Yamas? Okay, so. All right, so, all right, so the uh, uh, next one is the awesome. No, why don't we read the yamas and the niyamas unless you know them by heart? I know them by heart. Okay, so put the paper down and let's hear it. Okay. All right, so the yamas. All right, the yamas. Uh, first one is uh, ahimsa, that's nonviolence towards all beings. Uh, the next one is um, let's see, uh, satya, that's truth and word and thought. 
for that is um, Astea, which is uh, let's see non coveting mm-hmm. or non stealing. Mm-hmm. I get the, to me they're kind of the same. I I kind of I think non coveting. I know you, you probably that's also well like non coveting is not car, like Jay car. Leno doesn't need a hundred cars like he's. Uh, like well, it's more like they have gluttonous. Well, I guess not coveting. And instead of, other, of like straight up like stealing. Well, you can also say not coveting of other people's belongings, right? Well, like, you I, could. I, don't want that guy, I don't want that guy's girlfriend, like, right? That's, right. That type of thing, right? But also like stealing my purse wouldn't be cool, and that's totally different. Do you huh? see what I'm saying? Esteo would be stealing my purse. So say it's actual abstaining from stealing. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Parigraha, coveted. That's, that's also so non coveting, non hoarding, non greediness. And right. they're in uh, they're in thought, action, right? Yeah. All right. So after a stay was um, let's see here, uh, uh, brahmacharya, that's abstinence, moderation. Or wh- what do we say? Yeah, moderation. Yeah. And then a parigraha, which again, non greediness, non hoarding, non coveting. Um, for the niyamas, which uh, relate to how you deal with yourself in the inner world. Um, we have uh, uh, Sasha, which is uh, cleanliness in the mind and body. Uh, Santosha, which is the uh, con- contentment with self. Contentment with everything. Okay. Um, tapas, which uh, means heat. Um, that's the austerity, that's the actual you know, the discipline of practice of yoga. Well, the as for a Raja yogi, but would a karma yogi consider asana tapas? It's a trick question. Karma yogi wouldn't give a shit about the eight limbs to begin with. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, mm-hmm. next. All right. Um, let's see here. Um, oh, uh, Spadiyaya. <laughs> Spadiyaya. Oh, I, yeah, I like saying that one. Um, that's the self-study of uh, soul and God. It is. <clears throat> What's ultimate surrender? Uh, um, that would be uh, Ishvara Pranayama. Good. Did, what Pranayama. one did you miss? I didn't. Perfect. <laughs> okay, continue are, reading. Are you giving me more trick questions? <laughs> But that, that's my wording, so yeah. that's the way I want you to memorize it. But well done, keep reading. Where are we? Oh, okay, asana literally seats. Um, or that, which is a Sanskrit translation. Sanskrit translation, uh, coordinated breath with movement. The most, no, we're going to do this together. (laughs) The most widely recognized component of yoga, quite often completely mistaken for moving meditation, is the key to and has to be real yoga, right? So what does that involve? Do you want to reread that? Huh? Do you want to reread that? Did you understand that part? I just, I don't know, I've, I've got poor vision, so I just got to... Oh, okay, uh, do you want The most uh, widely Flash recognized day? component of yoga... Coordinated breath and movement. Uh, quite often completely mistaken. So often people are just doing the shapes without the breath, right? Mm-hmm. Just doing the exercise. That's all I'm establishing there. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So next is pranayama, which is breath control, right? Is imperative. Oh, one second. Mm-hmm. Pranayama, imperative. Should I? Because I'm filming this 